Hello again. In this clip, I'm going to show you some information on the IR proximity sensors made by Sharp. And then I'm going to show you how I used one of these sensors with an Arduino Uno board to make different sounds based on how close an object is to the sensor, such as your hand. First off, this is the type of sensor that I'm talking about. Like I mentioned, these are made by Sharp, and they have several different models with different ranges and different outputs, but they all look essentially like this. They have an LED for transmitting the IR beam, and then there's an IR sensor next to it that detects the reflected beam. You may find this amusing, but these are the same sensors that are typically used in automatic flush toilets. This is a comparison chart that shows the different sensors that are available and what range each sensor is effective for. This chart was produced by a company called Acroname, which is where I buy these sensors from. Acroname is a robot supply company and they have all types of robot parts. So if you're interested in that type of thing, you can visit their website at www.acroname.com. The group of sensors at the top are all analog output sensors, meaning that they output an analog voltage, depending on how close the object is. And these two output a digital signal. So if an object is within their range, which is identified by the red dot in the graph there, then they'll output a logic high, and if there is no object, then they'll output a logic low. So this just gives you an idea of what is available, and depending on what application you have, you can choose the best sensor for that application. So today, we're going to be using the GP2D120, which is one of the sensors that outputs an analog voltage, and it has an effective range out to about 12 or 15 inches. Now if we go and look at the data sheet for the sensor, there's a graph that shows the voltage that the sensor will output based on how close an object is. The distance to an object across the bottom is in inches from 0 out to 16, and on the left it shows the analog voltage coming back from the sensor based on that distance. This voltage is going to be what we will be measuring with our Arduino board. You can see from the graph that the output ramps up sharply for an object closer than one inch, and then it slowly tapers off to less than half a volt when the object is more than 15 inches away. Okay, if we wanted to check to see whether the sensor we have is acting the same way that the data sheet says it is, we can check this out simply by connecting power to the sensor and then measuring the output pin. So for the moment, Forget that I've got an Arduino board here and pretend that it's just a power supply because all I'm using it for at the moment is to provide the 5 volts to the sensor. But if you look at the DVM and see that my hand is a couple inches above the sensor and if I lower my hand almost on top of the sensor you'll see that the DVM gets up to about 3 volts and then starts to go down again as I put my hand right on top of the sensor. And then as I slowly raise my hand, you'll see that that voltage starts to taper off, just like the graph showed. And when I get my hand to about uh, 12 inches, you see that I'm about 5 volts, which is just about where the graph said it would be. And if I take my hand away altogether, you'll see that it drops all the way down to 0.04 volts. So it looks that the sensor is working approximately the same way that the data sheet said it would, so that's great. Now before we move on, we need to take a look at what the actual value is that the Arduino is going to see when we hook the sensor up. It's going to be doing an A to D conversion, meaning that it's going to be converting that analog voltage to a digital value, and that's the number that we're going to have to deal with. So. Um, we're not going to go into detail about this part, but I actually hooked up a, an RS-232 connection to my Arduino when I was first working with the circuit. So I could send the actual A to D value back to my computer and look at it. And based on those values, I made a graph that you see here. 
And this graph shows, again, the distance in inches along the bottom, but instead of the analog value on the left, it shows the converted digital value that we're actually gonna be dealing with. So you can see that at one inch, we're gonna get back approximately a number of 550, and then at 15 inches, we'll see about the number 50. So that's the range of actual integer values that we're gonna be dealing with in our Arduino code. As you can see from the graph, that as the distance to the object increases beyond 15 inches, that the value the Arduino is getting from the A to D drops to about 50 or 60. So remember this number, because we're gonna be taking a look at the code next, and we're gonna to have to be using this number. Okay, so this is the code that I wrote to take the reading from the IR sensor and convert it to a tone that you can play through a speaker. You can see that the program is extremely simple. The first thing I do is declare three values. Sensor pin is my analog input pin, and I'm gonna use analog input A0 to measure the voltage coming back from the sensor. Speaker pin is digital pin eight, and that's the pin that we're gonna connect directly to a speaker to generate the actual tone. And sensor value is the integer value that I'll get back from measuring the analog signal. So that's the, the number that's gonna range from about 500 down to 50 that we were just looking at a second ago. In the loop routine, the first thing I do is read the analog voltage on my sensor pin, which is A0, and I put that value into the variable called sensor value. Now remember a minute ago when we were looking at the graph that showed how the Arduino A to D value dropped to 50 or 60 when the object moved out beyond 15 inches? Okay, well, I decided that if the object was beyond that distance, then I didn't want the board to generate a tone at all. So if I was changing the tone with my hand and I took my hand away completely, it would just stop generating a tone. Because to be perfectly honest with you, the tone isn't that mellow of a sound and you don't want it going all the time. Obviously you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I thought it was nice that if my hand was not there that the tone just stopped. So anyway, I checked the sensor value, and if it's greater than 60, it means that the object is closer than 15 inches, and we will just output the value to the pin using the tone statement. The tone statement simply takes a number and outputs a tone equal to that frequency on the pin that you give it. So for example, let's say the sensor value comes back as 100. In this statement, we'll produce a tone of 100 hertz on the pin defined as speaker pin, which we defined as pin eight. Or if you get a value of 400, then a tone of 400 hertz will be output on that pin. Now, if the value coming back is less than 60, then we're gonna execute this no tone command for our speaker pin, which will turn off the tone until a value that is greater than 60 is detected again. And then the last thing we do is delay 50 milliseconds at the bottom of each loop to give the Arduino time to set the tone and give your ears time to hear it. Without this delay, it sounds really scratchy. Okay, here's the finished system. I got my IR sensor connected to the Arduino board with power and ground. And then I've got the analog output voltage coming back from the sensor, which is this white wire connected to analog pin 8A0. And then I got my speaker, one wire tied directly to ground, one wire tied to digital pin 8. And you can see that if I put my hand over the sensor and move it, the tone changes. If I raise the hand, the tone gets lower, and if I lower my hand, the tone gets higher. And if I take my hand away altogether, then the tone stops. So this is how you can generate tones using an Arduino board and a sharp IR sensor.